Hey guys, I'm going to talk about stalls today. Stalls, stalls, we hate stalls. Don't nobody like a stall. Especially not when they last a long, long time. So, yeah. So, I'm kind of in one, even though I'm kind of not really trying to lose a bunch of weight. I'm just trying to work that down. And, um, and so I'm eating the foods, the same foods that I was eating when I was down. So this, this is about a mental thing. So, <clears throat> you know, if you're going along and you're losing weight and you know, you're doing the right things, you're doing the things that you did to get where, you know, where you were. Or where you're at, and then all of a sudden your scale won't move. And it's like, Dad, gummit, I know I'm doing the right thing. I know I'm eating the right things. I know I, I'm, I'm counting every bite. So I know it's not that logically, and that's the problem. Logically, you know you're doing the right thing. But Dad, gum, is it frustrating? Look, I got bruised right down here. I don't know if you can see it. Callie whacked, was, I leaned over to you, so excited, you jumped up and whacked me in the chin a couple days ago, and it has hurt ever since. But anyway, you know you've been doing the right things, you know your scale has gone down, and you know that, you know, there's probably a reason for why your scale isn't going down. Maybe the reason is you need to lower your calories or maybe the reason is you need to lower your carbs or maybe you need to lower your fat or maybe maybe you just got some inflammation going on is your body's healing from something oh like maybe walking exercising or maybe it's healing from put, getting stents put in you know so <clears throat> Your body does its own thing that it, your body does what it needs to do. And uh, it ain't worried about your feelings and what you want to see on the scale. I'm here to tell you that. Um, so while I have lowered my calories to 1800 to see what would happen, well, so far, nothing's happening. Now, in my case, I know I'm eating less calories than what I was eating before because I've lowered my meat and that's the amount of my meat and I've gone to lean meat and that's what I did before when I was on my weight loss journey. So why? Why am I telling you all this? Well, my scale right now is the same as what it was when I started and I'm noticing a little bit of congestion in my lungs, almost like there's fluid in there. And, um, or maybe it's the weather change, but, um, I'm noticing a little bit of congestion in my, in my lungs. So I, not you, not, not you, but maybe you may have that problem where when you retain some excess fluid, you, you might feel that in your lungs also. And so if that's the case, <clears throat> then like me, you know, you are holding some excess fluid. By the way, I don't do all this makeup every day. I just do this, this makeup routine when I'm talking to y'all. Because I don't do the highlight and contour. Ain't nobody got time for that every morning. Well, some people do, but I sure don't. Um, and I'm sad because this contour, they don't make it anymore. The place I got it from. So, I gotta, someday, someday when it runs out, I've had this thing since I quit selling Unique and um, about five, six years ago. And um, someday it's going to run out. But this, since I don't use it every day, it'll probably last me another six years. Anyway, so scale. Sorry, Terry. Focus, Terry. Scale. Installing. You know, if I was really stressed about it, I would do something serious like cut out my, um, my apples and see what happened if I did. Um, if that's because that's about 200 calories right there. So if I decide if I get to a stage where I'm really mad 
or I really want to um, see what happens, it, it, I would cut out my apples. Probably not my supper fruit, but my apples. But, um, but yeah. So we all stall, and we all hate them, and it's all aggravating. I've got, like I said, I've kind of got this, I, I don't, whatever it is, I've got this continuous weight right now. And um, it's 168.1, but it hadn't gone up. So, you know, what I, what people would tell me whenever I was in that eight month stall or six months, I don't know, I would not tell you that time, the time frame, I always get a little bit longer when I tell it. But anyway, what the people would say was that, well, you're proving that you can maintain the weight. So, you know, when I tried to kind of think of it that way, it was kind of cool to say, oh, hey, I maintained my weight for eight seven six seven months eight months whatever it was six months we'll just say six um I'm, i was able to maintain weight for six months so i know that when i reach my goal i'll be okay i'll be able to do it so um but it's frustrating as all get out i know it you know it when that stall happens it's so aggravating but if you're doing something and going through something that your body is trying to heal from, ain't nothing you can do about it. You can try to starve yourself past it, but then your body isn't going to heal right. And then you're going to be all jacked up inside because you didn't, you took away the nutrition that your body needed when it was trying to heal. So you can't do that. You can't lower your nutrition when your body's trying to heal from something. Um, but if you know, if you know that what you're doing is right and you know that um, that it is a, a stall because of you've reached your calories you've reached your you know so one thing that so I followed Ali McWowie I used to follow her all the time I haven't followed her in a while but um, I used to follow her because of her weight loss journey and something she said and something I found that I had to do is every so often your you your um, your scale is gonna stop moving, and when it does, you need to adjust your calories. Period, and that's what I did. So um, <clears throat> so I raised whenever I would stall, I adjusted my calories. Now if I was really really working hard right now, I was like oh, I want to lose more weight. I would reevaluate what I was eating, reevaluate the amounts, and um, and then focus on. Um, uh, uh, less calories. Um, like, like I may not have the fish with my chicken at night. I may not have, um, <clears throat> all the, all the vegetables. I may not have my fruit. So you have to track everything. So that way, you know what you need to change. Um, because I, like yesterday when I talked to the nutritionist, I was able to show her my logs of everything that I'm eating. And so, you know, had she said, well, you need to change this, or you need less fat, or you need more fat, or you need this, that, and the other, she has an exact account of what I'm eating. By the same token, you and I, we need an exact account of what we're eating. Because like right now, like I said, my, I guess <clears throat> right after the, <clears throat> the stints, I was this same weight. So for three weeks, I've been this same weight. So if I was freaked out about it and I, you know, if I had not started walking, um, and had not been through a, a, um, a, a, a procedure, a pretty serious procedure, then I'd be like, okay, Terry, let's, let's evaluate things and take some things away. Um, but you're not able to, I, I would not be able to do that if I didn't track. So that's where things have to happen. If you stall, we've got to be tracking. We've got to track because, like I said, if I get to a stage where I get really mad and I really do want to lose more weight, then I'll say, okay, well, I know how many calories I'm eating. What do I need to take away to go down to 1,600 calories? If I'm right now, I'm eating around 1,800. So if I would say, okay, well, what do I need to, what do I need to take away to equal 1,600 calories? Well, boom, one apple is 200 calories. There you go. So, you know, or I don't know, whatever else. I would look at everything, but you have to know, I have to know what I'm eating. So that way, if the scale stalls and if I decide I want it to move 
more, then I need to be able to adjust it. But regardless, we're all going to have stalls because just like when somebody goes to the gym to change, you know, to build muscle, they can go in every day and lift a 30 pound weight every single day and it's going to start building muscle. Their muscles are going to break down. They're going to get inflammation. They're going to retain fluid in that muscle and, and that muscle is going to build back up and fill in those tears and that's how it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But eventually a bodybuilder has to increase their weights. So it's the same thing with us in the scale. Eventually we have to lower the amount of food or whatever macro you choose to call it. Eventually we have to change what we're eating a little bit to get that scale to move because our body reaches the point where, okay, this would be our goal, our maintenance food at this size, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to say 1,800 calories. Maybe 1,800 calories is a maintenance um, calorie amount and the amount of carbs I'm eating. It might be maintenance for 168 pounds. So, okay, well then let's try 1,600. So then I go. I could go down to 1,600. And then eventually, I, let's just say then I hit 140 pounds. I ain't going for it, but let's just say 140 pounds. Well, 140 pounds, maybe it takes 1,600 calories and, and that amount of food and carbs to maintain um, 140 cal pounds. So that's kind of how I see it working. Now, I'm not saying it, that it's all that way. But that's how I have to interpret it from my brain is this amount of food is what causes me to maintain 168 calories. So let's lower it. Okay, so now this amount of food is what it takes for me to maintain 140 calories. Oh, now this amount of food is what it takes to maintain 120 calories. So, or 120 pounds. So it, you have to look at it that way and you have to know exactly what we're putting in in order to know what to change. So like I said, I'm just saying this because I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the same scale, weight on my scale as I did three weeks ago and I have dropped my fat down big time. Um, I have dropped my calories down, but again, I know that I started walking and I know they say um, walking is one of the biggest things to help you lose weight. Well, yeah, but, but if you ain't got no muscle and you're sedentary, you're going to build some muscle first. And so my weight is my, even though my weight is the same, my body is probably shifting a little bit, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. I just wanted to have this conversation because I am seeing the same scale, weight on the scale that I did three weeks ago. And I know, you know, we all go through those and I, you know, I had that happen to me for seven months, six, seven, whatever, shut up. Anyway, however long it was, um, I had it happen to me then. And so I just had to keep going. The biggest, most important thing is keep going and don't stop. You can get mad all you want to. You can get frustrated all you want to. But the key is don't stop. If you stop, then you want me back to where you were. I'd be back at 340 pounds if I would have stopped. Because I'm not every time, every time I lost, I, 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 um, started decided to go back to how I was eating I didn't just go back to the weight I was when I started I gained 30 40 pounds more so which is worse stalling at 108 at 168 pounds or giving up and going back to the junk food going back to the pain going back to the CPAP going back to the blood pressure medicine going back to the depression medicine going back to the uh fluid retention most medicine going back to the all the things, all the things, the aches and the pains and the constant uh, Tylenol, the constant ibuprofen, which is worse, seeing 168 on my scale every day for the rest of my life or going back up and being worse off than I was when I started. No. So the biggest key thing is don't stop. Don't, don't go back to what you were doing before you started. That is the most important thing. And that is what I've always done when I've been on a weight loss journey. And that is what is different this time. It clicked. It clicked. Terry, you can't go back and eat that junk. You just can't. So anyway, I just wanted to talk to you this morning because I know um, I my scale was 168 this morning. And so I'm like, Grr! but I'm like, 
168 is better than where you were at the very beginning and where you'd be if you decide to go back to how you were eating before. So, okay. Love you guys. Bye.